In this tutorial, we'll be taking you through the process of toolpathing the vectors we created in the vector drawing tutorial. We'll be heavily concentrating on the v-carving for this video. I'll be discussing all the points to consider to get the best results and then I'll be walking you through from start to finish utilising the preview toolpaths form to give us the best indication of how our part is going to turn out. So I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to go over a few points so that we can achieve great results every time we come to v-carve as there are a number of factors that it will depend on to get it right. Firstly, v-carving is the easiest way to create really attractive decorative elements with a CNC machine. Whether you're using it for text or a graphic, it's really fast to both calculate it in the software and it's also generally quite quick to run it on the machine to ultimately give you what is a 3D look. It's important to try and understand how v-carving works and that the depth of the cut is determined by the tool angle and the width of the vectors. V-carving can only be done with closed vectors as it will run the tool directly in the center of the opposing vectors to the depth the tool can essentially fit in between them and up to the maximum pass depth specified. Understanding this is essential when considering the perfect tool for the look that you want to achieve. Some points that we need to think about that can affect the outcome of our V-carving is to ensure that we have flat material and join with that is to ensure that our machine bed is also level as you want the tool to be in the material at an equal depth per vector width on all places we are cutting so we're not left with a piece that looks unevenly cut. Another thing we need to make sure of is that the tool's Z0 is accurately set to the top of the block. Setting to the top of the block eradicates the necessity of accurately measuring the thickness of the material and ensures that the tool enters and leaves the material where it should to create the sharp points it requires. We also need to have accurately sized tools. Even if our tool states it's a 90 degree tool, it's best that we measure that as even one degree out will alter the look of the part when coming to preview it or even running it on the machine. Another aspect to tooling is to ensure that our tools have a sharp point and not a small flat as this will also take away from the overall effect and ensure that there are no dings or dents on the tool too. Lastly, we need to make sure that we are using clean, closed vectors to v-carve. This will ensure we have nice and smooth v-carving. We need to ensure these vectors are not also overlapping, as it will make it unclear to the software which areas that we want to v-carve. If you do have a design which requires overlapping, you can create separate v-carve toolpaths which are run in the order that you require them to achieve the effect that you are after. So let's start by opening a new copy of the software. And let's open the file that we worked on earlier. Don't worry if you missed that tutorial. Obviously you can you can go and watch that now. But if you didn't, there is also the pre-prepared file that is in the projects folder. So I'm just going to go to open and then open my five star coffee drawing. Let's head straight over to the toolpaths tab. So we can do this a number of ways. We can either use this icon here or we can simply just press F12 on the keyboard. Before we go ahead and create any toolpaths, it's always wise to check our material setup. So I'm going to do this now. So I'm going to go to the set button up here. Just double check, obviously, any of the parameters that have been set already. So uh, the three quarter inch material, I can verify that that's what I want. And I do want to make sure that our Z0 is set off the top of the block. I'm going to change the XY datum position to be in the lower left. It was handy for us to have it in the center whilst designing all these vectors, but when it comes to machining, it's definitely better to start from the lower left. So I'm just going to check that. I'm going to make sure that our clearance and plunge is set to a reasonable level. So at the moment, it's 0 0.2 inches above the material, which is fine. Uh, obviously, you'll need to check this uh, when if you do go to run this on your machine to make sure that there's nothing that's 0 0.2 inches on the material, say, like clamps that hold the, the piece of material down that is in the area that the machine will be working. The home and start position, X0, Y0, that's fine, and 0 0.8 inches above the start point, that's fine as well. So when we're all happy with this, we can simply just press OK to accept the material setup. So if we just take another look at what we're going to be working towards, we can see that we're going to be recarving all the text, the coffee cup icon, and the border as well. The only thing that we're not going to be v-carving is the actual profile cutout pass. So if I just minimize that, what we can do is we can select all the vectors 
and we just want to deselect the outer vector because that's the one we're going to be using to profile. So just hold shift down and just select with your left mouse button the outer vector and that will deselect that. We can then go over to the toolpath operations and then select to have the V carving toolpath. So just select that, that will take us into the form. We're going to start at uh, zero, 00, so the top of our material for the start depth. So just type that in there. I'm going to show you a couple of different examples uh, with different V-bit tools just to show you the different depths that they can cut and we're going to use the preview tool pass to view that. So if we just go to select tool and this will open up our tool database I want to use just to start with a 120 degree V-bit tool. As you can see I don't actually have one of those at the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to copy our 90 degree one and a quarter inch tool so just come down to copy once it's selected and that will create us a new tool and what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the angle to be 120 degrees so just make sure that you type that in there and also then change it in the name and then what we can do after that is we can simply hit apply and you are going to get this message pop up and what it's basically saying is that the pass depth is greater than the tool maximum cutting depth and that's basically worked out by the angle of the actual tool and how wide the actual tool is and it's telling us that the max pass depth for this tool is 0 0.361 inches so what we need to do is we just need to simply press OK on that and in the pass depth just need to change that to something like 0 0.35 and then we can hit apply and obviously if you are going to run this just make sure that your spindle speed, feed rate and plunge rate are all uh, for your machine. I'm just going to stick with the defaults for this and I'm going to press OK to accept that. I'm just going to go ahead and give this toolpath a name so I'm just going to call this vcarve design and then I'm going to hit calculate. The software has opened up the preview toolpath form and has displayed the toolpath on the screen. It doesn't really give us a sense though of what it's actually going to look like so the best thing to do is simply while it's highlighted simply select to preview the toolpath and if we just turn that into like a, an ISO view we get more of a feel for the, the shape that is created with the v-carving tool if we just zoom in a little bit we can take a closer look at the finish now with a 120 degree v-bit we do get quite a shallow cut into this it can be quite good if you're going to be gilding the design as the shallower the angle the more light it will actually collect within the gaps and it will uh, add to the shiny reflection that you get from the gold leaf so I'm just going to zoom out again by pressing the ISO view button and what I want to do is I want to demonstrate to you the different cut depths and different looks that we can get from using different V-bit tools so what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to change this to a, a much steeper angle like a, a 60 degree V-bit tool and just to show you the difference that they make so what we can do is we can simply close this preview toolpath form select our toolpath and then come up to the edit toolpath icon we can then go into the tool database again and then this time I want to use the 60 degree quarter inch V-bit and I'm just going to keep this as the default there as we're just using this to view and then press OK and then we can just recalculate this toolpath by pressing the calculate button down there as we're using a 60 degree V-bit tool for this it's going to be able to cut a lot deeper than the 120 degree V-bit tool so we don't actually need to reset the preview for this so we can simply just go ahead and preview this and we can see straight away by using this tool it has gone uh, in a lot deeper and it's made the text and the icon a lot sharper so and this is all governed by how wide the vectors are separated apart so obviously as we can see in the top of the S here it's actually quite narrow and that's all down to the fact that the gap in between these two vectors here is quite narrow so that means the tool has had to come up quite steeply here and then just below the top of the material to get that point there that's created on the top of the S whereas when it was going round 
and the vectors actually get wider apart from each other the tool is actually able to get in deeper hence why it looks really quite deep in the wide areas of the text and the uh, coffee cup icon here so I think it would be nice to try something in between the 60 degree and the 120 degree v-bit tool so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this preview toolpath form and then I'm going to go ahead and edit the toolpath one more time and this time I'm going to simply just double click the actual toolpath and that will take us straight back into the v-carving toolpath again we're going to be changing the tool so let's come over to the select button to open up our tool database and I'm going to select a 90 degree one and a quarter inch v-bit tool I'm going to keep these as the defaults obviously if you do want to run this on your machine again as I always say just simply check just to make sure these are uh, going to match your machine and press OK and then again just let's recalculate the toolpath now this time we will need to reset the preview as the 60 degree v-bit tool will actually be able to go deeper than the 90 degree v-bit tool will ever be able to so let's simply click the reset preview button here and then we can choose to preview the selected toolpath once again and we can see what it was going to look like if it was going to be cut on the machine and I can see to my eye that that looks a lot better than the 120 degree and the 60 degree so now I'm happy with that I'm going to simply click to close the preview toolpath form and now I'm going to go back to the 2D view and I'm going to deselect and I'm going to select uh, outline so that we can then create our profile cutout pass so simply select yours and then come over to the profile toolpath icon I'm going to specify our start depth as 0, 0 and our cut depth I'm just going to type in Z equals I'm going to select a quarter inch end mill for our tool so I'm just going to select that there and then press OK at the moment it's saying that it's going to take six passes for that but since I'm going to be cutting fairly soft material I'm just going to go click the edit button here so it will edit uh, the pass depth purely just for this tool path and this tool path only so no permanent changes so I'm going to change the pass depth to a quarter inch so that should then half the amount of passes that I'll need for this to three as you can see there I'm not going to add any tabs to our toolpath as I'm going to imagine that we have a vacuum hold down system there and then I'm just going to simply name our toolpath profile cutout and then click calculate just going to zoom in a bit here so I'm just going to select the ISO view one more time and then we can select to preview our toolpath one of the nice things that the software allows us to do is to remove any non-joined material so in this preview for instance we can remove what would be the excess material so that would be this and we can do this simply by just double clicking on it now this is a nice feature that we can use to allow us to then uh, create what would be a virtual prototype of the design that we're going to create and we can do this simply by using this option here to save a preview image another nice feature of the software it also allows us to change the material look of our design so if we wanted to change it to a different type of wood we can simply come up to here and select in the drop down box to say choose say Canadian maple for instance we don't actually even need to use different types of material we can just also use a, a solid block of colour so I can just choose that option there and then I can select say uh, a dark blue for the background and I can even choose individual toolpath colours as well so if I just select the v-carve design and then I'll come to this option here and then select the toolpath colour and we can select this to be different colours as well so we could have uh, a light on dark so let's just choose say a yellow or even a, maybe more of a gold colour or even a lighter blue for instance we can even swap it around and have a lighter background so I could maybe even have a yellow background and then have dark text so say black but black makes it lose the effect that the v-bit does so we may want to select say a dark grey for instance which then gives us the effect still that the v-bit tool has created and with each colour scheme and different materials that we choose we can be saving preview images to send 
to our customer. I'm going to say that the yellow is a bit harsh there, so I'm going to go back to say using maybe a wood. So I'm going to go back to my Canadian maple, but I'm going to keep the text in dark grey. So let's say we've had the go ahead from our customer. We can close the preview tool pass form. If we wanted to, we can edit our profile cutout pass and to add tabs, and then we can select it and save it out. So we select our save tool pass form, and then we select our post processor, and then we simply click the save button. We give it a name, and then just save it out, and the same goes for the vCarve design as well. Let's say, for instance, that we're not going to be running this on the machine anytime soon and we may want a visual reminder of what we're actually cutting. We can do this by simply going over to the 2D view and then selecting to print preview. And what that will allow us to do is it will allow us to print out the vectors that we've designed and also it will also include uh, a rectangle or square around our work, letting us know that that's our work area. We can also add dimensions to our work. So if we go over to the drawing tab by pressing that button there, we can simply use this option here to add dimensions to the 2D drawing. This tool was never designed for full-blown technical layouts, but it does allow us to throw a few dimensions on there so that we know what we're working with. I'm just going to add a vertical and horizontal dimension so I know my work area and what the size of the part is. So I'm just going to select to do the horizontal dimension first. I'm going to select a suitable type of font. So Arial's fine, so I'm just going to select that. I'm going to specify a readable text height, so about a quarter inch would do. And a suitable number of decimal places. I'm going to leave that as three. The offset's fine. We can also place these dimensions on a layer of its own. So if we tick this, and then we could call the layer uh, dimensions or whatever we specified. So to do this, we simply just snap from one point to another and it will measure the horizontal distance. So as I want to do the length of our part, I'm just going to simply select two of the widest parts. So I'm just going to snap to this corner here, and I'm going to draw a line and then snap to this point here on our vectors. And then I'm just going to pull up and it will draw a line and then it will draw the dimensions in the center of this line, so about there. And we can do the same again for the vertical dimension. So I'm just going to snap to the top of this arc here and I'm going to snap to the center point of this arc down here and you'll know when it does it as the cursor will change to that. And once I do click, and then drag it over and then just find a suitable place, so halfway between here and our edge of our work area, just so that we can fit the text in. And then click. And again, we could then close that and then go to File and then Print. And that'll just give us some indication when we come to setting up the machine of the orientation and obviously the dimensions of our part that we're going to be cutting. We're at a stage now where we've completed the design and we've completed creating the tool pass for this as well. So we can think about now saving our work. So if we go to File and then Save As, I'm just going to save this one uh, with underscore tool paths just to let me know that this file contains a tool pass for this drawing and then click Save. And that now brings us to the end of this tutorial, so thanks for watching.